Hello, welcome back. Let's talk about stable relationships in this in this video. All right. Okay, so I uh, I have a write up here, and the description of the different table relationships that exist in SQL. Uh, let's begin by going through this short write up. It says relational databases are collections of tables that are connected together. Each table represents an entity that has a collection of attributes, that is, table columns. The tables in a database are connected to each other by means of relationships, which are specified according to how different entities interact with each other. So there are four main types of table relationships, which are listed below. Just like we've seen and I've said over and over again that the what makes a database relational is the connect, connection of tables in such database. So because we have tables being connected and these tables are connected cannot or the connection cannot happen if they are not related. So the connect, connectedness of tables in this database and not just any tables but uh, any collection of tables but related tables is what actually inform the name relational databases so uh, the connection is done through relationship like i said earlier and these relationships will be discussed here the first type of relationship i think i would like to explain is the one-to-one -one relationship and the, the entity relationship diagram is displayed or shown as displayed on my screen so whenever you see the straight line with vertical tiny vertical lines at both edges of the straight line or both sides of the straight line that represents a one-to-one -one relationship now a description for the one-to-one -one relationship is an instance in one table when an instance in one table relates to a single instance in another table for example you could have a customer in customers table which can only have one address in the address uh, in the address uh, uh, addresses table, right? So I think there's a repetition here. One address in the addresses table. So if you have a, a table called address table, and you have a customer table, or customers table and address, addresses table, one customer can only be related to one address. Okay. So in that kind of uh, situation, if you create a relationship between customers table and addresses table. You would have a one-to-one -one relationship all right uh next and that example is one to many or many to one relationship so the many to one or one to many relationship is depicted or represented with this particular diagram here and this is a situation where we could have an instance in one table that corresponds to multiple instances in another table a perfect example of a one-to-many or many-to-one relationship would be a situation where each customer from the customer's table can have multiple invoices from the invoices table. So uh, for the many-to-one relationships, the reverse is true. So uh, the one-to-many or many-to-one relationship depends on how the positions of the table. So in this instance given, if the invoices comes before the customer's table, then we can have call such relationship a many to one relationship. But if the customer's table comes before the invoices table, that is the customer's table is placed at the left while the invoices table is at the right, then we can say we have a one to many relationship. Then the third type of relationship that we can form in SQL is called many to many relationship. So many to many relationship is represented by this diagram. And this is where we have multiple instances of one table that correspond to multiple instances of another table. For example, one invoice can contain multiple items and each item can uh, be in multiple invoices. So those are, or this is an example of a many-to-many -many relationship. The last type of relationship that can be seen is called self-referencing self relationship. This depends on nature of relationship, right? So for the self-reference relationship is when a particular table is related to itself. For instance, 
a table can be correspond can correspond to another instance in the same table through different attributes. So you have one instance in one table or table corresponding to the same instance in, or to some instance in the same table. So I'm going to show you a typical relationship, uh, different relationships that exist uh, between or uh, among the table that we're working with, the tables that make up the Chinook database that we're working with in the next slide. Okay, before we get there, let me, let's talk about uh, the premium keys and foreign keys. Very important concept you need to understand. So in order to, to connect a table or to have like one or more tables in the database, now we need some specific table relationships, like I said earlier, using what is referred to as the key columns. Key columns. Now, two tables are regarded as connected if one or both of the tables contain information that is related to one or more of other table columns. So, uh, the, like I said earlier, before you can connect two tables, there must be a column that's at least minimum one column that is common to both tables. So, uh, by connecting by this way or this way, if we have related information or related column, uh, the information about an instance of an entity can be distributed across multiple tables in the database. So, there are two main uh, types of key columns that help us execute a kind of uh, a relationship. We have the primary keys and the foreign keys. All right. For primary keys, this is an attribute or column that can be used to uniquely identify any role in the table. So for you to assign a column the primary key, that column must have the attributes of being able to uniquely identify any role in the table. By definition, primary keys cannot have duplicates or missing entries. As such, we usually auto generate primary key, auto generate primary key or uh, key values using special columns. For example, the integer auto increment helps to you to create a primary key column because auto increment means that the column once you enter a record for the next item or once you enter the next record, that field or that column will be generated automatically. So it could be uh, int auto int auto int auto increment for integers it could be one. So the first ID could be one, second two, third, three, four, five, six, so on and so forth. All right. So this auto increment generates a value for each each time you add a new record to the table. So uh, whenever you have such table, I mean such column in a table, you can then assign the column the primary key. Uh, let's head over, let's focus our attention on foreign keys. For foreign keys, this is an attribute or a set of attributes in a table whose value corresponds to a primary key in another table. Unlike primary keys, foreign keys can have duplicate entries. However, foreign keys must still uh, obey the constraints that each entry in the column has to correspond to some value in the primary key column of the connected table. So when you have a primary key in a table and you want to connect that table, say table A, to table B, that primary key that exists in table A, uh, say it's common, is the, the, the column that is common to both tables, uh, in table B, the column we refer to as the foreign key because it is not the key in table B that actually uh, is not a primary key on table B because it doesn't, you know, satisfy, say, the property of having no duplicates. And uh, even if it's uniquely identify the items still in B, or it could be repeated. It could have some some du duplicates, but being a primary key in column in table A, can, it cannot have duplicate values and so on and so forth. So these are uh, these are these are the concepts, the primary keys and the foreign keys concepts. We would learn more about them as we look at the practical aspects of creating relationships in SQL in my SQL in my SQL workbench.
So like I said earlier, I wanted to show you the different relationships uh, that exist between the tables uh, in our database, the Chinook database. So when you look through this, let's read from left to right. Starting with the media types. The media types is related to tracks table by a one-to-many relationship, right? So by a one-to-many relationship, you will see that we could, this particular media types table is connected via media type I, uh, ID. So there's a media type ID on the media types table, which is the primary key. But when it gets to the tracks table, it becomes the foreign key. So it is the key that we, that we use to connect these two tables. Okay, and there is a one-to-many relationship, which means that the media type ID in the media types table uniquely identify every element or every entry, every entry in that table. And there is just uh, one of each instance. There are no duplicates. But when you come to the tracks table, for you to have a one-to-many relationship, it means that there are duplicates of the media type ID that connects or relates to the media type ID from the media types table. Uh, on the, the generous ID table, there's also a connection, which is a one-to-many connection that links the generous table with the tracks table, okay? I would like you to pay attention to something. You see, when we're discussing the, the icon that represents each of these relationships, I said for a one-to-one, -one, we have just one single vertical, short vertical lines at both ends of the line. But when you come over to this relationship that we formed, you can see there are two lines. And you may be wondering, why the two lines? It's not supposed to be one. So the double line there means that there, there is one and only one instance of these media types on the table. One and only one instance. Then for the other tail of the relationship, there is a, like a circle with the symbol for the many. So the circle many means there is a zero or many instances. So it means that it could be it's possible for the media type ID to be empty in some rows, which means that there is no no such instance. Okay, so it's not necessarily like it's not it mustn't be all the you know, that's not what I what I meant to say. What I mean to say is that it's possible that is uh, there are some media type ID that are absent here. So let's say media type ID two, it's possible that media type ID two is not is not present on this track table because uh, maybe that particular media type hasn't uh, been a, a track, hasn't been, been developed for that media type. Or we don't have any track on the track table that's considered or classified under that particular media type. Do you understand? So that's what you mean by having a zero or many, zero or many kind of instances. Here is one and only one instance. Then in the case where you have the one and the zero, it means that there is a zero or one instance. So this is the generic type, so generic ID. Now it could be that we don't have any uh, track that has that is under a particular generic. So is it one or zero instance? And here is this, this is uh, zero or many instances. Okay. So just go over each of the relationship between the tables and study. Uh, the self-referencing relationship is seen in the employees table, where the employees table is related to itself by the employee's ID is connected to the reports to column, okay? So each employee reports to a particular person, right? So there's a, there's a column called reports to, and is it is an integer. So it stores maybe those, the, the managers that these employees reports to, all right? So that is, this is a, a perfect, perfect example of a, um, what's it called now? Self-referencing uh, relationship, and it's a one-to-many relationship, which means that that, that there's a manager that several employees report to, right? So that is why we have a one-to-many or many-to-one relationship. Okay, so these are the various kind types of relationships we have in SQL. Uh, please, I'd like you to review this material again and ensure that you understand every single thing that has been said. And for each table, the primary keys are indicated by a key or a key icon, yellow key icon. Study this and I'll see you again in the next video where we'll learn how to create 
a relational database in my SQL workbench. Thank you for watching this. See you in the next one. Goodbye.